Alrighty guys, welcome to Blade Show 2021. I'm Evan from RiversEdgeCutlery.com. Today we have Brian Brown with us, knife maker, knife designer extraordinaire. He's here, uh, he agreed to do an interview with us. We're here on Thursday pre-show, just started uh, getting set up. You were getting your booth set up yep, as I understand. Yep. So we really appreciate you taking yeah, the time man. to talk Pleasure to, to us. Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to meet you also. You too, you too. Just got a couple questions for you. Kind of keep it quick, keep it casual. I know you got other stuff to get to today, yeah, so man. we appreciate the you guys taking the time. Absolutely. So first off, just to word right off the bat, how did you guys get started in the business of knife making? Really, it's been kind of a, just a, a slow process. I uh, started doing woodworking stuff with my dad years ago. He just kind of plays around with it. And uh, I ran across a video on YouTube on how to make a knife and just ran with it you know just started going into that youtube hole oh yeah of deep diving into anything and everything with knives and how to make them and and so it was just a, a fixed blade with a file jig that's awesome and you know it took me three months to make my first one but then it kind of got faster and faster and then i bought a grinder and you know it was just a real kind of a slow process over the last five six years now okay and uh it's just kind of progressed from from little fixed blades to bigger fixed blades yep. to three years ago started with the folders yeah. and then trying to go production side with the Jaeger and designs oh, yeah. and you know it's just kind of taking little steps here and there. And now your folders are really like what you're known for like when people are new to the yeah, business definitely. they know you for I mean the Jaeger specifically but right. they know you for your folders that's really cool. Do you still have that original fixed blade? Absolutely. Good. I okay, I was, just, I, I was just hoping I it wasn't still, gone somewhere. Good. Yeah, no, I've got the first fixed blade. I've got the first folder. Is it here at Blade? The first fixed blade? No, actually, neither of them are. Okay. No, I left them at home. I would love to get a picture. I'd like to flash that up. That would be sweet. I can. I okay, can. cool, man. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, um, what were some of your influences when you were first getting started? And I guess still today, I mean, you still have influences. Well, there, the, so. the YouTube video I ran across was from Aaron Go. Okay. And he did a lot of how-to videos early on of just basic knife making. And then same thing with Ecom Knives. Okay. When he did his whole how to make a folder series. And that's really what got me on the folder train. That's was, so cool. Was seeing his videos. And you know, a lot of guys early on, like, like Frankie from Tactical Pterodactyl. Yeah. Um, Matt Westberg, Berg Blades. Yeah, yeah. Those guys were really the early, early ons. Um, Compliance Edge. Seeing, seeing what they did. Oh yeah. And that's kind of where I started was that tactical style fixed blade. Yep. And that's what I really loved making. You know, I wasn't really making dedicated like hunting knives or anything like sure. that. I liked the, the tactical G10 yeah. acid wash blade look. Modern. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And then with folders, um, one guy that I've always just been, you know, enamored with from when I started and to even till today, just seeing what he can do is, is Jonas. Yeah. Glacius J.I. Knives and what he can do with the equipment that he has and just manually machining everything is just it blows my mind that's so cool and you know just guys like that that i really look up to to try to keep up with really is oh, what yeah. you know it's it's i don't want to be doing what they're doing i want to have my own style but trying to keep up with just the the technical side of it Absolutely. and just the artistry behind it yeah i guess that's kind of the difference between like being inspired by them and trying to compete with them you know absolutely yeah that's awesome. i don't think any of us compete with each no. other i mean we're all friends we all know each other and i've never had a, a or felt like i've had competition in this world at all that's awesome i mean this whole show is nothing but a bunch of friends hanging out yep you know, and it should be. we get to sell stuff and make a little bit of money. Yep. You know, even better. It's absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. What has been your favorite project to work on to date? I mean, really, if uh, what I would consider a project would be like the production. Oh yeah. You know, the the design side of it. Um, I've started learning Fusion 360, doing my own 3D CAD work. Cool. So that's been really fun. I've always messed with, you know, just little computer stuff here and there early on before knife stuff. I tried Photoshop oh, yeah. and, and just stuff like that. And so I like the design side of it too. So the Jaeger M really kind of pushed me to 
jump into the 3D side. I had somebody help me with that one. Yeah. But with the, the Chuck Fix Blade that I came out with and then the Raptor, I did all the 3D mock-up, yep. everything on those. And then they were able to take it and make the prototypes from that with very little change. That's awesome. Which was fun. So as far as a project, I mean, just learning how to do the production yeah. side on top of customs as well. It's just, it's, it's a balance. What did learning that 3D design do to your tolerances and like the fit and finish? Like, did that impact that at all? To an extent, because I have control oh, yeah. over that. So if I sent just a basic 2D drawing of, say, the Jaeger M, yeah. it could have come out different than oh, yeah. what it did from me sending them, you know, and they make their own tweaks. Sure. You know, the production company knows the machining side of it, which I don't. So they had to make their own tweaks for that. But if you look at between the two manufacturers I've used with Wii and Riot, I sent them both the exact same CAD yep. drawings. And then you got two really good knives, but they're distinctly different. That's, yeah. So for me, being able to control what it looks like from the beginning mm -hmm. cuts down on prototyping, cuts down on emails, oh, yeah. back and forth and tweaks. So that way it helps me be able to get stuff out faster. And leaves less up to their kind of interpretation. Exactly. That's really cool. You know, because if I want the grind to look a certain way, yeah, yeah. if I try to explain it or draw it on a sheet of paper versus having a 3D rendering makes oh, a yeah. big difference. That's really, really cool. Actually, that, that answers this next question. I was just going to ask you some, what were kind of the difficulties or some of the pitfalls of going from a small batch to working with these larger manufacturers? The hardest thing for me is really the balance of time. Yeah. Because the production stuff obviously takes away from the custom stuff. Yeah. It's, I'm one person. So my custom stuff is pretty much an eight to five job right now mm -hmm. that I do during the day in the shop. Wife's at work, kids are at school, yep. I'm in the shop working. After hours, once dinner time, bedtime, kids are in bed, I'm sitting on the computer oh, yeah. answering emails to the manufacturer, doing drawings for new knives, doing the rendering of a current project. That's cool. You know, so it's, I don't necessarily see that as work. Okay. You know, because I enjoy it. So it's, I'm working, but I enjoy the design side of it. Sure. I'm just hanging out on the couch. Yeah. Watching TV, working on designs. Passively. You know, it's, yeah, it's almost like it's not even work. That's awesome. You know, I love it. That's the best place to be. Absolutely. That's the best place to be. I love that. That's really, really cool. So another thing that I'm, I'm always curious when I'm talking to a knife, man, knife maker, knife designer, what are some of your favorite materials to work with, either on the custom end or on the production end? I could stick to titanium and micarta and be, be vintage micarta yeah. especially and, just, oh, yeah? and be done. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, I, I enjoy Zerk because of the dark aspect of it. The Tomasis is cool, yeah. but a, a simple, just user-friendly micarta scale or even a liner lock sure. with a nice clean machine grind blade is, Absolutely. is just, that's, if you look at my personal collection of knives, there there's hardly any Timascus or Zerk or anything in them. They're all fairly basic, but it's either micarta or full titanium. Absolutely. And, and they're the, all frame locks. Yeah. And the, I always thought there was kind of a beauty to that simplicity, to that utilitarian right. nature of those materials. I think that's cool. I think it, if you can take simple and make it look good, yeah, that says something. You don't need, as they say, it's lipstick on a pig. Yeah. You don't need all of that. Yep. It's, it's cool to do, and I do a lot of it because it does look nice. It does. But it's not necessary. If the design work is good, if the materials are good. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Just on a more personal note, whether it's a knife that you have in your mind that you would make, or if it's just a knife that already exists, what is your kind of holy grail knife? Of my own? It can be anything. It's up to your interpretation. <laughs> it would really almost have to be one for myself. Yeah. Because every time I make something for me, it's because 
it was a customer order they got messed up interesting and i couldn't not couldn't sell it wouldn't sell it sure. because it didn't meet my specs yeah yeah i've got three or four or five of them now that's cool that were okay and usable but not sellable to me yeah. so for me to sit down and actually make myself a knife to keep and actually keep it is something that i really need to do oh absolutely and would be kind of a grail because i go around with friends knives in my pockets of other yeah. custom makers yeah you know i enjoy collecting as much as i enjoy making absolutely and 90 percent of the time when i run into somebody and what do you do for a living i yeah. make knives oh can i see one well here's one but here's i didn't make this but i make stuff similar to that yeah. you know so actually making myself one and carrying it what would it look like to you like would you do something crazy with the timascus with the zerk or would it just be like it would probably be a titanium frame lock most likely the mini jaeger model yeah with probably like zerk collar zerk backspacer and clip yeah oh yeah just clean or something with a micarta show side i love it you know linerless so it you yeah know, lightweight absolutely and just i just need to do it i just you find excuses to not. But time's yeah, the biggest time. one, man. Exactly. That's that's exactly what that's it is. That's really cool. I, I like the I like the idea of you making something for a customer. It didn't turn out to your specs. Perfectly usable, but it's not something that you're willing to give up to a customer starting over and just right. that becomes part of your rotation. That's really yeah. cool. That's really, really cool. You should uh, maybe bring some factory seconds to Blade next year and see if we can get those through. I, I won't sell them, but I've got, I've got them in the bag. I would, yeah, I would love if to see them. If you want to see them, I, I got them in the bag. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Did you have any, I know you, had, you mentioned a lot of your um, influences at the beginning. Did you have any kind of like direct mentors with advice or with techniques at the beginning? Other than face to face, no. Okay. It was all I started just YouTube, just me. Yeah. And YouTube, and just buddies that were local that just enjoyed hunting or like knives. Yeah, you know, yeah. they weren't knife makers themselves or anything like that. And then my good friend convinced me to try to sell one, and then he's the same guy that convinced me to start an Instagram. Yeah. And it, that's where it that's, started. <laughs> that's really where it I mean it's really where it took off was when I started posting to social media Absolutely. and then you start running into like Frankie with tactical pterodactyl I started following him oh, and yeah. then I was trying to do something and was having problems and I reached out to him not expecting a word from him you know at the time yeah. he probably had 20,000 followers sure. making knives right when I started was like six months before I think he went full time. Okay. So I'm like, this dude, he's not going to respond to me. Sure. Of course he did. Yeah. He's the nicest guy I think I've ever met. That's another maker. That's amazing. You know, you, he, you, he was able to give you that advice. The, kinda, the, he didn't he just pass you over. There was no, there was no direct, you know, I went to a shop sure. and learned he how to do show anything. You grinding he would tell you. me, this is how I do it. Sure. And then the same thing with just other guys and it's I've amassed this incredible friendship with all these different makers. That's so cool. In the man. folder world, the fixed blade yeah. world, the production side of stuff, guys like you that are dealers. Yeah. You know, and just learn so many different sides of the business, whether it's making or whether it's production stuff. I talk between Adam Purvis and Great guy, Felix buddy. with something obscene yeah. and Matt Westberg with Berg Blades when I wanted and decided to do my Jaeger production run. I reached out to them and talked to them yep. for weeks, months beforehand, just trying to figure out the best way to approach it oh, yeah. and how to do it. And they were nothing but helpful. Cause like I said, there's no competition between us. That's so good to hear. We're, we're all friends and we all repost each other's stuff yeah, when we've yeah. got pre-orders going on and whatnot. Yep. So it's, it's awesome to be able to have guys like that it's like the knife world is constantly expanding, especially the custom high-end world. I, I just have personally seen that over even the last right. year. So there's enough guys that are so into it to go around, I feel. Right. Like. You know, there's, it used to be like, you, oh, you were a strider guy, you were a hinderer guy, and there's right. people kind of stayed in their lanes, where I feel like now you, someone opens up their knife roll, you have a brown, a bag, uh, like an Adam Purvis, right. like you're saying. So like. I just think that's so cool. It's that, just a, yeah. there's so many people doing it now. Yeah. 
and and just with the f companies forming over the last you know five six seven years like we and Riot offering that OEM service to makers like me it's changed the knife game it completely it has because before then that wasn't an option yep and you know they had mid techs sure before which was cool but it still wasn't a full-blown high quality just production yeah. where you design it and then you don't really have to do anything you had to get with spyderco and get an exclusive design with spyderco yeah. but still you weren't able to sell it yourself sure it was still spyderco and spyderco dealers so Absolutely. now that it's it's so broad and people don't understand that i'll go say i'm going to a show and they're like talking like it's you know who's going to be next to you like it's a competition sure and explain to them like it's not like a guy i talk to almost every day is my table neighbor that's cool and we're best friends yeah and we're selling stuff side by side and it just happened to work out like that yeah and it, it it's it's awesome yeah that's that's so good to hear yeah because i think that is a misconception that there's maybe not maybe not animosity like there's the right word but right. competition between you guys it's so good to hear yeah and that's it's so cool you know between certain people that might be sure there's always button heads somewhere but in general all you got to do is go to the pit at Blade Show yeah. on a Friday or Saturday night and see 2,000 people down there all talking about the same thing. Yep. Knives, period. That's why we're here. Doesn't matter what it is. Yep, exactly. Absolutely. That's so cool, man. All right, man. We've held, we've held you for a little bit. A couple more questions for you, just a couple short ones. If you could collaborate with anyone, be it a, another business, another maker, who would you collaborate with? That's tough. No holds barred. That's tough because I've had so many opportunities lately sure. to collaborate with the production side. Yeah, yeah. And I've done, I've got a, a collab with another friend of mine, Adkins Knives. You know, we've done blade, a blade together. I'm in the process of another one with another maker who I'd call a friend. That's fantastic. You know, so that, that's, really, that's really tough. Um, I mean, I feel like I've done it with the people that I'm friends with. That's you good know? to hear, man. And... There's not really, other than, you know, Jonas and I, I wouldn't say are best friends, but I, I talk to him every now and then. He's giving me advice on stuff, but to work with him, because he's kind of been like the person I look up yeah. to a lot just in his design and his, his, like I said, his just craft. I'd love to work with him. Absolutely. That would be so cool. He, he's a he's super nice, humble guy, too, and working with somebody like that it just makes it even more fun absolutely when you get along as friends absolutely and as collaborators yeah. professionally that's fantastic and then lastly brian what's in your pocket unless it's something you're waiting to reveal <laughs> no it's what's actually in your pocket today? it's actually a custom okay that's cool. not one of mine cool man so, what is it he actually has stopped recently and i'm sad okay but it's a dustin snyder oh, saber man. That is fantastic. I just picked it up recently. I was able to get it from a guy secondhand, and uh, I love it. He he's actually another fellow Mississippian. That's really and, cool. Man, that's um, classy. He's he's unfortunately stopped recently to pursue a, a great line of work in the Air Force. Okay, fantastic. So props to him for for serving our country and and going above and beyond with that. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, his his knives are excellent, and I'm happy to own two of them now. Yeah. That's really, really cool, yeah. man. So before I let you go, first off, thank you so much. Thank you. Do you have anything you want to promote? Socials, YouTubes, anything like that? Just, uh, websites. Facebook, Instagram, websites, all super easy. Just Brian Brown Knives on any of them. BrianBrownKnives.com. And oh, then I've sort of set up a YouTube. I think there's two videos okay. on there. But that's that's not more to come on that maybe a couple things here and there but you know i'm not you're busy I'm not, making knives man. i'm not alex Steele. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you don't got time to do this kind of stuff Absolutely. you're busy making knives Absolutely. we're not out there making knives yeah, thank you so nice much to again. meet you thank we'll you we'll stop by your booth we'll thank shoot a little bit Absolutely. over there and see what you got yeah. going on awesome really really appreciate it it'll be a good weekend i'm excited man i hope so all right it's Evan. gonna be awesome thank you nice Evan. to meet you. you too thank you guys we'll be back with more content from blade show 2021 see you soon